Hi, I'm Kiara from Norway. Please like and subscribe. From the moment I was born, my dad decided I'd be the future of our small country. He was the head of the government and was loved and respected by everyone. Dad always wanted me to be like him, so my training started pretty young. You must have seen kids running after butterflies in the park or jumping on couches. Well, I never did any of that. Instead, I had to attend special etiquette classes as soon as I was old enough to sit at the table. I never spoke loudly, and there were certain words I wasn't allowed to use, like poop or pee. Always say, I want to drop the browns in the bowl, or I want to put gravity to good use. Well, that did get me some strange looks in kindergarten, but I didn't care. One time when I was seven, I went with mom to my friend's birthday party. I was having an amazing time stuffing my mouth with cake, but when I wanted a fifth helping, mom refused. You know the sugar rush makes you hyperactive, Kiara. No more cake. But when mom wasn't looking, I sneaked to the table quietly and cut myself a huge slice. Just then, mom saw me and tried to snatch it from my hand when my classmate Naomi bumped into me and the cake went flying onto mom's face. What have you done? I wanted that cake. It's so yummy and sugary. Not like all those awful salads I have to eat at home. Here, have mine. This one's even more sugary since I added strawberry syrup on top. And here's a secret. Salads taste much better when you put chocolate sauce on it. That was genius. I tried her recipe that night, and the sugar rush made me go wild. I transformed into a little tornado bouncing off the walls, destroying everything in sight. And Dad was not amused. He gave me the biggest lecture on how I needed to behave responsibly and grounded me for a week with no gadgets, no storybooks, and no desserts. This should teach you how to live a disciplined life. I sulked for hours but knew better than to argue with Dad. The next day at school, Naomi asked me if I tried her recipe, and I told her the truth. But that's so lame! If kids won't eat sugar, then who will? We can't have the sugar factories go bankrupt, right? After that day, Naomi brought sweet treats for me every day, and soon, we became best friends. Meanwhile at school, I studied my butt off to ensure I topped my grades. I knew it was always expected of me, and I loved studying anyway, so I wasn't complaining. But studying wasn't the only thing I was good at. By the time I was in high school, I was the president of the student council, a national-level chess player, and the best actress in the school's drama club. And I absolutely loved the drama club. It was the only time in my life when I could forget who I was and slip into the life of another character. One time, I got chosen to play Juliet for an inter-school drama competition, but the guy playing Romeo broke his ankle and got replaced by the biggest jerk in our school, Justin. And he was so annoying. Ever since I'd made fun of his gigantic glasses in first grade, he'd held a grudge against me and was such a pain in the butt. Romeo, oh Romeo, where art thou, oh Romeo? Kiara, oh Kiara, I'll make you a tiara of spiders and flies all dead to put it on your ugly head. That's not what you're supposed to say! No? Sorry, I forgot my lines. But you're such a piece of art that poetry just blows out of me whenever I see you. God, why was he such a moron? Other than this minor glitch called Justin, my life was perfect. Hey, Naomi, I won the Spanish debate competition. Again. Could it be that no one else participated? Well, it's not my fault everyone's scared to compete against me. <sighs> Girl, why don't you just slow down and enjoy life? You know, you don't have to be perfect at everything. I know, but that's just how I am. No, it's just how you've made yourself to be. Tell me, when's the last time you went to a party? I don't know, but that reminds me. Dad's hosting a dinner for his politician friends tonight and your dad's invited too, so you better come along. That night at the dinner, all the adults were mingling with each other while Naomi and I sat in a corner sipping orange juice. What a bore fest. Catch me if I fall asleep. What's wrong with this party? The music's nice, the people are classy, and the food is good. How dare you call this food? Cows eat this stuff. Burgers, cupcakes, extra cheese pizzas, that's real food. As for the people, I bet they secretly hate each other. Can't you see all the fake smiles? That's called being polite. Polite my butt? After putting me through this torture, you've got to accompany me to the school's camping trip this weekend. I don't think Dad would. Just then, Dad walked over and said he wanted to introduce me to someone. Kiara, meet Ted. His dad's a media mogul in the U.S. And my dear friend, 
We keep joking about you two getting married. <laughs> Why don't you two get to、uh, know each other? Ted took me out for a stroll in the garden, and it was so awkward. He cracked the lamest jokes, kept bragging about how rich and famous his family was, and even tried holding my hand once. I I avoid holding hands since it's the flu season, and I can't risk catching an infection. <laughs> I like it. A girl who knows how to take care of herself will take good care of my babies too. What the freaking fudge! Thankfully, at that moment, someone came looking for him, and he left. I thought of escaping to my room when I saw Naomi at our mansion's gate talking to someone. It was Justin, and he was dressed as a pizza boy. What are you doing here? Belly dancing. <sighs> Can't you see I'm delivering pizzas? Sorry, Kira, but I was starving, and the food at your party is、uh, terrible. But Naomi, it's healthy, and it's good to eat healthy food.、Mm, good luck trying to convince yourself, hun. But I'd rather eat unhealthy food and go to heaven sooner. Mmm, yum. Um, I have a spare pizza if you want some. I I can't eat junk food and take risks with my health. Holy potatoes! I always thought you were a snob, but you're actually a nutcase. I guess it's no fun being you. <laughs> Can you stop being a jerk? It's easy for you to judge when you don't know a thing about me or my life. Feeling angry, I turned and stormed off. But deep inside, I knew no matter how much I tried to deny it, Justin was right. It was no fun being me. Feeling a bit frustrated, I went to Dad's study later that night to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. I had to tell him about that self-absorbed dimwit Ted, and that there was no way I could have a future with him. What do you mean, Ted's not your type? You don't even know him yet. Besides, I've decided this marriage will be great for your political career. Marriage is not a deal, and I'm still a teenager. So where's the rush? You two can start dating, and then eventually get married. I couldn't believe my ears. Dad had decided my future, and I had no say in it. I was so mad at Dad that the next day at school, I told Naomi I'd accompany her to the camping trip. Your dad agreed. I hope you told him you can't take security along. Dad doesn't need to know. Whoa! Who are you, girl? And what did you do to my perfect friend? I'm just letting her take a back seat for a while. Later that day, I was going to the library to return some books when suddenly a hand grabbed my arm and pulled me into an empty classroom. Listen, I'm sorry for last night, but it seems tragic that you've never eaten a pizza before. So I got this for you. Take a bite. I promise you won't die. Justin looked straight into my eyes, and for some reason, it made my heart skip a beat.、Mm. It's it's amazing. Not as amazing as you, though. <clears throat> I mean, you amaze me. And why's that? You're the only girl I know who looks like a goat eating a pizza. What an absolute <laughs> jerk! That weekend, when I snuck out of my house early in the morning for the camping trip, Naomi's car was already waiting for me. We drove for hours and reached a huge house by the lake in the middle of nowhere. Where are we? And where are the camp people? Kiara, don't be mad, but I lied to you. This isn't a camping trip. Justin and I decided to organize an overnight party, and I thought Dad's lake house would be perfect for it. What? You've got to be mad. You know I hate parties. That's 'cause you've never been to one. Come on, Kiara. It's just one night. Even though I was super mad at Naomi, I agreed since I had no other option. Her driver had already left after dropping us off. As we went inside the lake house. I discovered Naomi had invited tons of people, including some of our classmates, and everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. I stood like an outcast for a while until Naomi forced me to join everyone, and I must admit, I had a lot of fun. That night, we played spin the bottle, and I got partnered with none other than Justin. Our task was to spend an hour in the woods. Oh come on, you can't be serious about this. It's just a stupid game, guys. I think Kiara is too chicken to do this. She's a scaredy cat. Me? Scared? Ugh, you've got to be kidding! I marched ahead of Justin, and in a matter of minutes, we were out in the woods. Justin asked me to stop, but I was determined to prove my bravery. So I kept going, and soon we were lost. You idiot! How are we going to go back? No one's ever called me an idiot. And why don't you open Google Maps or something? Because there's no signal here. We tried finding our way back, but when we couldn't, we fell asleep under a tree. When I woke up the next morning, I found myself lying awkwardly over Justin, drooling on his jacket. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Ugh, you're heavy. I'm gonna have a sore back for a month. 
You could have woken me up and risked your anger. No thank you. Besides, I understand you're used to sleeping on soft mattresses. I wanted to tell him his abs were anything but soft, but I knew better. Um, Justin, I... I want to drop the browns in the bowl. You want to what? Oh, gosh. Ugh. I want to... I need to use the washroom. And where will your highness find it in the middle of this jungle? No need to be so snarky. I'll go find one myself. Where do you think you're going? Don't even think of wandering alone unless you want to end up in some bear's browns. He then pointed towards a big rock and asked me to finish my business behind it. We spent that day wandering through the woods. Thankfully, Justin knew how to climb trees and he plucked lots of fruit that kept us going. We talked about random things and I found myself getting attracted to him with each passing second. He was funny, smart, and incredibly handsome. And for some reason, I felt totally at ease with him. I told him everything about my life, my love for theater and dad's expectations of me. He told me about his younger sister who was sick and that he was working two jobs after school to earn money for her treatment. That's why I was at your home that night delivering pizzas. You aren't who I thought you'd be. You pretend you don't care, but deep down, you're actually a good person. And you're trying so hard to earn your dad's approval that you've forgotten to have your own life to live. <sighs> you don't get it. It's not that easy. It isn't so complicated either. Okay, close your eyes and see yourself as a politician giving a speech. Do you like it? Um, yeah, kinda. Now, picture yourself on stage giving the best performance of your life. In that moment, I imagined myself as Juliet, delivering my lines with such confidence that the audience cheered loudly. It felt so surreal that my eyes flew open. So, which scenario did you like better? I, I don't know. Don't lie to yourself. You have one life, Kiara. Live it the way you want to. Suddenly, Justin's face was so close to mine that I forgot to breathe. Then he gently lifted my chin and kissed me. It was the most magical moment of my life. Just then, we heard the sound of helicopters and we started shouting and waving like maniacs to catch their attention. Soon, a team of paramedics rescued us and when I finally reached home, I thought dad would be relieved to see me. But to my surprise, he looked furious. I can't believe you would be so reckless, Kiara. Do you have any idea how much negative publicity we've got? Dad? I was lost in the woods for hours, and all you care about is negative publicity? I stormed off to my room, wishing I'd never been rescued. That night, I was about to go to sleep when I got a call from Naomi that left me stunned. I wish I'd never invited you to my party. Your dad is literally ruining my life. He got my college application canceled by telling the dean stories about my reckless attitude. And he even got Justin fired. You knew how the guy was working so hard to save money for his sister's treatment. But Naomi, I didn't save it, Kiara. I wish you had a spine. Saying that, she hung up on me. But I felt my blood boil. How could Dad do such things? I ran to Dad's study and confronted him. And he didn't even bother denying it. They got what they deserved. That was it. Something in me snapped that day. Dad... How could you? That college was Naomi's dream. And Justin's working two jobs so he can afford his sister's treatment. I don't care. Those kids were distracting you from your goal. My goal? Says who? Did you even consider for a second that I may not want to be a politician? All my life, I worked so hard to make you happy, but I just can't do it anymore. For the first time in my life, I shouted at dad and he looked stunned. The next two days, I refused to eat anything until Justin got his jobs back and Naomi's admission was restored. Ultimately, Dad had to listen to me. Then, when I told Dad a few days later that I planned to join an acting school in the US after I finished high school, he threw a massive fit. But I was no longer the Kiara he could dominate. I knew Dad had bribed the college dean into kicking Naomi out, so I threatened to tell the press about it. I'll create a massive media frenzy, one you'll never come out of. I knew Dad's reputation meant everything to him, so he had to agree. I moved to the US, and over the next few years, I worked my butt off and became a popular actress. One day, I was backstage after a performance when I heard a familiar voice. Autograph, please? Yeah, for me too. Justin? Naomi? I was so happy to see them both that I jumped and hugged them. We sat and talked for hours. 
I told Naomi how I felt so ashamed of what Dad did that I never contacted them. I thought they hated me. Naomi told me she'd graduated from an even better college and apologized for her bad temper that day. And Justin told me how he'd saved up enough money for his sister's surgery and had even started his own pizza chain back in Norway. I am just so happy for you guys. Can you maybe make me even happier by going to dinner with me? How does this weekend sound? Oh, really? And what if I say no? I'll try again and again and again. I shut him up with a kiss as Naomi cheered us on. 